Hey, welcome back to the next lesson on how to take your Among Us project and make it multiplayer. In this lesson, we'll show you how to navigate from your main menu to your waiting room and then onto your game scene. We need to figure this out before we show you certain mechanics like picking an imposter, which we'll show you how to do in the next lesson as some of you have been asking. Now before we begin, I do want to apologize for not being able to put out as many videos this month as I have in the past. This month being December is quite crazy, not only is there Christmas, but I also have a lot of family birthdays this month, including my own. And so while I'll try to keep up the production of videos, it might not be as frequent as it's been until the new year. All right, so here I have my Among Us project open inside of Unity, and I've loaded it into our waiting room scene. Now the first change that I've made to the scene is I've disabled the AU player prefab that we had in the scene from before. If you want to, you could also just delete this object. Next up, I've added an interactable prefab to my scene. This is so that we can have an object that when clicked, it enables our customization menu, much like the laptop in Among Us. Now I didn't get the laptop sprite added to the sprite sheet of all our interactable objects, and so I just set the sprite render component of this interactable object to the control panel of the reactor minigame. I then also set the same sprite for the highlight object, which is a child to our interactable. Then on our interactable object in the AU interactable script, I set the minigame variable to our customization panel. That way when the player clicks on this interactable object, it'll enable our customization menu panel. And that's the next change that I've made to the scene where I've disabled our customization menu panel. We can then disable our next or play button. You'll then want to add a UI text object to your canvas. And I've resized and positioned this text object to be near the bottom center of our canvas. You can then set the text value to be blank and I've set the color to white. This will be for the countdown before the game starts. Now there's two more things that we need to do for this scene. The first is that I've added the game setup prefab to the hierarchy. This object is from the general prefabs folder from our Photon Matchmaking add-on. This is the prefab that instantiates the Photon Player object into the scene. So go ahead and drag this prefab into the hierarchy. Now this last object in our scene is the Game Controller object from our game scene. This is the object that has all of the spawn points for our game scene. And so to get this object, I'm gonna load into our game scene. And all we have to do is make a prefab out of this Game Controller object that has all the spawn points. So you'll drag it into your project window, and then we can load back into our waiting room. And here I've dragged the Game Controller object into the hierarchy. Now if we wanted to, we could reposition the spawn point so it's similar to the waiting room in Among Us, where all the players are instantiated in chairs near the top of the scene. Now once you've done all this, we can go ahead and create a new script for this scene, which I've called the waiting room controller. So once you have this script created, we'll open it up. Inside this script, we need to add two namespaces. The first is using photon.pun, and the second is using unityengine.ui. We're then going to add some variables to this script. The first is a photon view called myPV. The second is a serialized field of type float called time to start. The next is a float called timer to start. The next is a bool called ready to start. The next two are serialized fields. The first is a game object called start button and the second is a text called countdown display and the last is a serialized field of type int called next level. Once you have these variables created we then need to initialize a few of them and we'll do this within the start function. The first is our myPV variable which we'll set to git component and we'll look for a photon view. We then need to initialize our timer to start which we'll set equal to time to start. Once we've initialized these variables, the next thing that we want to do is enable or disable the start button based on whether or not we are the master client. And we'll do this within the update function just in case we become the master client if the previous one leaves. And so I have start button dot set active and we're passing in photon network dot is master client. And so if we are the master client, then we'll enable the start button. And if we're not, then we'll disable it. Now after this line of code, we're gonna jump down to the bottom of the script where I've created a new public function. This is a void function, which I've called play. Inside this function, we want to check to see if we are the master client. And so I have if photon network dot is master client. If this if statement is true, then we want to toggle our ready to start bool. So I have ready to start equals exclamation mark 
ready to start. We're then going to pair this play function to our start button, and now we'll use the ready to start bool to begin our countdown timer. And so back in our update function, I have another if statement where we're checking to see if we are the master client. So I have if photon network dot is master client. Inside this if statement, I have another if statement where we're checking to see if ready to start is true. If it is, then we want to begin our countdown timer. So I have timer to start minus equals time dot delta time, and we'll then update our countdown display. So I have countdown display dot text equals, and here I'm casting our timer to start, which is a float, as an int. This will get rid of all the decimals of our float variable and only show it in terms of seconds. We then need to convert all of this to string, and so I have dot to string. I then have an else statement for if ready to start equals false, and inside this else statement, I'm resetting our timer to start. So I have timer to start equals time to start. And if we want to, we could also hide the display. So I'll type countdown display dot text equals and then an empty string. We then have another if statement where we're checking to see if our timer to start is less than or equal to zero. If this if statement is true, then we want to load all the players into the game scene. But we only want to do this once, and since this is all being done within the update function, as soon as the timer to start is less than or equal to zero, everything inside this if statement is going to be run through a bunch of times really fast. And so to fix that, we want to change our timer to start variable so that this if statement only gets run through once. And so here I'm setting timer to start equal to 100. Next, I'm checking to make sure automatically sync scene is set to true. So I have photon network automatically sync scene equals true. And then finally, we can load into the game scene. And so I have photon network load level and I'm passing in our next level variable. Now at this point, this script will allow the master client to start the countdown timer when they press the play button. And when the countdown timer reaches zero, it'll then load all the players into the game scene. But there's one thing that this script doesn't do, and that is it doesn't synchronize the countdown timer for all the clients to see. But we can fix this by adding one RPC and changing a bit of the update function. And so at the bottom of the script, let's type square brackets PUN RPC. This will be a void function, and we'll call it RPC underscore play. Inside this function, I'm going to move our ready to start toggle from our play function to this RPC. We can then call this RPC inside our play function. So I'll type mypv.rpc. I'll pass in the name of our RPC function as a string. And the second parameter will be RPC target all. Now inside our update function, we want to make it so that the timer to start variable counts down for all the clients and not just the master client. And so I'm going to cut this if statement where we're checking to see if we're the master client from our update function. This will make it so that for all clients, if the is ready to start variable is true, they will start the countdown and display that value. Then if the variable gets set to false, the timer will reset and the display will hide. And it's only this last if statement that we want to execute on just the master client. And so I'll paste back in our if statement, but only around this last if statement. That way it's only the master client that's checking to see if our timer to start is less than zero, and it's only the master client that's loading all of the players into the game scene. And so now we can save our script, and we'll go back to Unity. Inside Unity, I've selected our game controller object, and I've attached our waiting room controller script. I've then set the time to start variable to 10, the start button is this next object. The countdown display is our text object. And the next level I've set to 2, which will be the build index for our game scene. I've then also attached a photon view to this object. And the last thing that you need to know about this object is that you need to make sure that you don't apply the changes that we've made to this prefab in this scene. To help you remember this, you might want to just unpack the prefab. So you can right click on this object go down to prefab and select unpack. This will disconnect this object from the prefab. Now there's two more things that we need to do before we can test our project. The first is that we need to select our next button, scroll down to the on click event, and here we want to drag in our game controller object and then use the drop down menu to select waiting room controller and then play. And the last thing that we need to do is add this scene to our build order. So we can go to File, Build Settings, we'll then select our scene folder, 
and drag our waiting room scene in between the quick start menu demo scene and our game scene. And now we can build our project and test it out. Alright, so I'll click play in the editor and play in the standalone. Here in the scene view you can see that our players have been instantiated on their spawn points. I can then walk down to the interactable object and click on it which will enable our customization menu. Now the customization has not been synchronized across the network and you might want to add a close button to the customization menu but if I click the play button on my master client you can see there's a timer and that timer is synchronized across the network. When that timer reaches zero we're then loaded into the game scene. Now that's everything that we're going to cover in this lesson on how to transition from our main menu to our waiting room and then to our game scene. If you enjoyed this lesson, make sure that you give it a thumbs up and leave any questions you have in the comments below. Also make sure that you subscribe to our channel so you can be up to date with all our latest videos. Thanks for watching, we'll see you next time.